All right, part three. Uh, drag and drop. Well, we're not dragging and dropping because this is a piece of paper. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this thing. I moved it over here. So I'm going to add 1R to both sides. <clears throat> then I'm going to have 9 is greater than or equal to negative 11 uh, minus 5R. Right? Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. We'll add 11 to both sides, and I'm going to have 20 is greater than or equal to negative 5R. I'm going to have to do a whole bunch of things here. Right? So first, we're dividing by negative 5 on both sides. That is the golden rule. Right? So we're going to have negative 4 less than or equal to R. But again, our problem is our variable is on the right. We need it to be on the left. So we're just going to literally flip everything around in order to get our right answer. So R is going to be greater than or equal to negative 4, which is going to be this first choice. Okay. Number 19, uh, drag and drop. Okay. We're not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and solve. Okay, so I'll go ahead and write it over here. Negative 3 over 4 um, is going to distribute to the quantity of 8K minus 24. Uh, which is greater than negative 12. Okay, so we're going to distribute. Negative 3 over 4 times 8k, I could use the calculator for this, but in, in the interest of time, I'm going to go a little bit faster. Negative 3 times 8 is negative 24. Negative 24 divided by 4 is negative 6. This is going to end up being negative 6k. If you did it in the calculator, it would show you negative 6. Negative 3 times 4, um, I'm sorry, negative 3 over 4 times negative 24, ugh, okay. So negative 3 times negative 24 is 72, and 72 over 4 Oh boy, I think that's I think that's 18. So I'm just going to go with that. And then uh, negative 72, or positive 72 over 4 is going to be 18. So hopefully that's going to be 18. Again, I did that in my head. Use the calculator. Don't be like me. Okay, uh, minus 18 on both sides. Negative 6K is greater than negative 30. We're going to divide by negative 6 on both sides, which is the golden rule. So we're going to have K is less than 5. And K is less than 5 is right there. All right? 20. Okay, so let's get into some of the literal equations. Okay, so I got area of a rectangle formula, which is area equals length times width. It wants to solve for W, which means I'm leaving W there. The thing I want to solve for, I really don't want to move unless I have to. So to leave W here, I have to unlink the L from the W by dividing by L. And that's going to get rid of L on that side, and I'm left with A over L equals W. Okay, so that's going to be my final answer, which is D. Okay. Pretty simple one. Next one, 21. Okay, we've got this equation x equals 3y minus 7z. I want to solve for y. All right, now, y needs to be by itself. But right now, I want to get rid of this negative 7z, so I'm going to add 7z on both sides. Okay? I can't add 7z to x because they're not like terms. So I can do x plus 7z equals 3y, because again, I got rid of the z's. Okay. Now I can divide by 3 on both sides, and I want you to write it just like this, where the 3 is kind of in between, because I'm dividing both of those values by 3. Now clearly, I can't divide x by 3 or 7z by 3. This is going to be part of my final answer. So it's going to be x plus 7z over 3 equals y. All right, and that's going to be a. All right, so be really careful there. 22. Okay, circumference formula is C equals 2 pi R. So C equals 2 pi R, okay? And I want to solve for R. So I want to get R by itself. In this one, the 2, the pi, and the R are all linked on the same side by multiplication. So I am allowed to unlink what I don't want on both sides. Okay, so the 2 and the pi go away. I get C over 2 pi equals R, done deal. Right, and that's going to be, again, choice A. Okay, 23. Okay, I've got this equation. It's A equals 2B minus 5C. I want to solve for B. So I want B to stay, which means I first have to unlink this negative 5C by adding 5C to both sides. Okay, so then I have A plus 5C equals 2B. Okay, and again, I'm trying to solve for B. So I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. Final answer is A plus 5C over 2 equals B. This is just like the previous problem we had, right? Make sure you select the right answer, though, because I think some of you are going to make a mistake on this. A plus 5C over 2, so it's C. Okay. All right. Last one, solve the inequality. What is the solution? Okay, so let's go ahead. This is a, uh, this is a compound inequality, so I'm going to rewrite it. This 10 is greater than 19. Okay, all right. So let's box this. Right. I like to box it, so I'm going to take this first. And again, I'm only boxing it to the second inequality sign. So I'm going to have 4 is less than or equal to 3x plus 10. Subtract 10 on both sides. 
negative 6 is less than or equal to 3x. Divide by 3 on both sides. I'm going to have negative 2 is less than or equal to x. Reversing this gives me x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay? And then let's go ahead and do this box. So from the first inequality sign all the way to the end. So this is going to be 3x plus 10 is less than 19. Right? So we're going to do minus 10 on both sides. 3x is going to be less than 9. And we'll divide by 3 on both sides. This was a pretty easy one. Uh, x is less than 3. Okay, so this is our answer. Now, from an inequality notation standpoint, when it's an and, and we know this is an and because it doesn't say or, I'm going to put the x in the middle. I'm going to put the smaller number on the left and the bigger number on the right. Okay, and we've got to make sure our signs are right. x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So this says x is greater than or equal to negative 2, but x is less than 3. So x has to be less than 3. Now, you're going to know that this type of notation is correct because the variables in the middle, lower numbers on the left, higher numbers on the right. Now, both of the inequality signs have to kind of sort of face in the right, in the same direction, right? I know that when you do this, they don't, but this is for graphing purposes, like number line graphing. And this is just for inequality notation. And we'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow, all right? Hope that helps. Last problem. Compound inequality, uh, which compound inequality describes this? All right, well, we know it's an or because I got an arrow pointing that way and then another arrow going that way. So they're all ors, so that doesn't help. This is negative six filled in circle. So it cannot be this choice and it cannot be that choice. So it's one of these two. This is an open circle on the negative five. So it's gonna have to be this middle choice here, right? Because we have open circle and closed circle. See you later.